Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this business right here, Meta Platforms, a business that is certainly much in the news and certainly very much discussed under investors, especially the value investors. Now, today we're going to be taking a look at this business. So as you can see right here, this business today was down about 4%, but year to date, 73% down. I mean, what is going on, right? I mean, it was down like 50%. That was already quite a bit. Of course, we had this huge decline, steep decline here in the beginning of the year. Everyone was going crazy at that time. Right now, we're looking at 75% in one year. This is year to date. Really, really quite absurd. I mean, if you take a look at Alibaba, for example, Alibaba is down a lot too, about 80% from its peak, I think, or 75 right now, kind of depends, but 75, 80%, very similar there. But it at least took about two years to get there. I mean, this is just crazy. One year, radical, radical sell-off in this business. And as we can see over the past five years, uh, even if you bought in like 2017, you will be down 50% on your money. And of course, given the trend that the business was in, this is certainly a rapid, rapid decline. Look at this. Very steep, very aggressive. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this business, and we're going to do that by taking a look at the latest quarterly earnings, because I do think they say a lot about Meta at this point in time. So here they are. Let's take a look at the results. Now, first competition, what did Alphabet do, right? Because right now we have about Meta, and we have Alphabet. These are the two big parties you can go to if you want to place ads online. Now, what did Alphabet do? Alphabet actually, well, got kind of slaughtered by the market, but I would say they had a decent quarter. Now, bear in mind, they only grew about like six to 8%, so really not that much. If you factor out the, the currency exchanges a little bit more, of course, but they still had a very tough quarter. And especially compared to Q2, they really had a tough quarter. So we, we expect to see some blood here also for Meta. And as we can see, we do see that in a way. Down 4% in terms of revenue and huge spending increases. Uh, and so that is kind of what's going on. And obviously, what, what happens if that happens? The EPS goes down, right? Your costs go up, your revenue goes down. And that is always a little bit of a nasty combination. Because even though your, you know, your, your, your top line is a little bit struggling, your bottom line is just incomplete chaos. And so that is kind of what is happening with Meta 2. Now, a couple of remarks about these numbers, because of course, you could say, well, 4% decline, TikTok is taking over the world, this business is in complete turmoil, uh, we're done, we're done, we need to dump this business. I would say not so fast. I would always argue that both Alphabet and Meta are very much cyclical businesses. If the economy is cooling off, what are we going to do? We're going to stop spending so much on marketing. And obviously, Meta will feel that in their top line. And I think that is kind of what is going on right now. Now, Meta does have other problems too. Let's not forget that. But compared to Alphabet, you know, we, we kind of see the same thing. Alphabet also, you know, normally grows about 20%. Right now, it's really struggling, grew about 6 to 8%. This is to a certain extent volatility in in spending of businesses businesses are in 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 trouble right now and so obviously they're going to cut their spending that is in a nutshell what i think explains part of the results there are certainly multiple factors to take a look at but my argument for this video is going to be the underlying business is doing actually quite well and i think there are a couple of things to take a look at here so first things first as we can see a four percent year over year increase in family daily active people this just means uh family family just means the family of apps right so instagram uh facebook of course whatsapp daily active people is up so they have more customers monthly active people up Facebook, very important. Facebook daily active users up. This kind of surprised me, actually. It was kind of a positive surprise. Even Facebook keeps growing. Now, I know what you're thinking. 3% is nothing. Might be. But this business is right now trading at about 6, 7 to 8 times earnings that it had last year. This business is not priced at growth anymore. And so this can be very, very appealing for the future of Meta. As we can see, 
monthly active users a little bit up uh, also up but a little bit less than the daily active users and what we also see here is that the actually the ad impressions went up 70 percent what does that mean we see more advertisement on uh, advertisement on our apps However, the price per ad decreased 80% year over year. And this for me was the most interesting statistic of the entire quarterly earnings report. What does that mean? It means that right now people are willing to pay less for an ad than a year ago. Now, there are two ways to interpret this. One, on the one hand, you can say this is cyclicality, right? This is exactly what we're talking about. They have more users, the users see more ads, but businesses are simply not willing to pay as much. And if you if the price goes down with 18% that you get for an ad, how can we expect to see the top line, the revenue grow? It is unreasonable. That is one interpretation. On the other hand, you could say, look, this is TikTok. Right? This is TikTok. Everyone is going to TikTok now. Everyone wants to, to, to spend on TikTok. Is that the case? I would argue it is not. Because TikTok, even though TikTok is extremely popular, it has been around last year too. Let's not forget that. That's one thing. And second of all, they do not have a huge business model yet. They do not take away a lot of the advertising market yet. A lot of businesses might create a TikTok account to kind of, you know, be in that space. But they won't go to TikTok. Hey, please, uh, here you have some money. Play some ads on your videos. Might happen in, to a certain extent, but really not that much. We do, however, see that businesses still go to an Instagram, to a Facebook, or obviously to Alphabet, to, to the Google or to YouTube. Usually bigger businesses go to Alphabet and YouTube, and the smaller businesses go to Instagram and Facebook. Interesting, right? This is really the big question, because if you think that this is indeed the case, that cyclicality plays an important role here, and you do believe that the underlying fundamentals of the business are still strong, hey, we still get more users, even in the Facebook, which is arguably, you know, a little bit more pivoted towards older people, whereas Instagram is a little bit more pivoted towards younger people. Facebook is still growing. Instagram usually grows faster than Facebook does. So that is super, super interesting. If you get more users and you get more impressions, if the price per ad comes back, at some point you'll do much better. Now, there is one important thing that I have to mention here, and that is, of course, the Apple changes. iOS changes have made it so that Meta has less data, and so they cannot target as accurately as before. This might also lead to a decrease in ad or price per ad for that, for that matter. Does that play a role here? Most definitely. Most definitely. How big is that role? That is super hard to say. But at the end of the day, I believe that Instagram and Facebook are still very competitive platforms, both for the consumer in terms of usage and for businesses to, uh, you know, to advertise on. And let's not forget, even if there is an impact of the iOS changes here in those numbers, that would only be a reason why short term the numbers look very ugly they said we're gonna lose about 10 billion in revenue a year now we haven't really seen that we haven't seen a drop of 10 billion in revenue but what we have seen is small declines of like three percent four percent one could argue if the 10 billion is factored out and don't forget currency exchanges too without the currency exchanges i'll get back to that later you would have seen growth this quarter. So don't forget, we have more users, we have more impressions. If Apple has an impact, it will take away 10 billion of every single revenue, year of revenues coming into the future. Right now, that would have a negative year over year difference, but after that, that is just factored into the numbers. And take out the currency exchanges, all of a sudden you're actually looking at quite decent numbers here for this business. So I would argue this business is not deteriorating. It is in turmoil. Yes, it is in insecurity with a lot of uncertainty, most, cer most certainly, of course, with the metaverse. All true, all true. But is this business dying? I do not believe so. And don't forget, you do not pay 25 times earnings for this business. If I pay 25 times earnings, I would just throw it aside immediately. We do not. 
we pay a multiple that implies that this business is going down. If it doesn't, you'll do very well. Let's also take a look here at the, the share of purchases. As we can see, they bought back a lot of stock here. Really, 6.5 billion. That is really, really nice. They still have uh, billions available and authorized for repurchases. But really, shares the shares have come down quite a bit. As you can see, just in one quarter here, or this is actually, uh, I should say correctly here, this is year over year in this quarter. As we can see right here, year over year, down quite substantially here. They have bought back quite a bit of stock, and this is a trend that is going on for a little bit longer, as we can see. Don't forget, Meta is also a platform, or a business, I should say, that actually attracts a lot of talent. And so usually that talent gets promoted or kind of, you know, gets bonuses in stock, meaning that they dilute. They are naturally diluting most of the time. Right now, they are not only buying back that dilution of bonuses and such, but on top of that, they are buying back a decent chunk of the business. It is really good to see, right? Because... They do spend a lot on meta. They are in this kind of yeah, transition phase, one could say, or kind of in this, uh, you know, splurging phase. They are spending a lot of money. At the same time, they do still have eyes for the share of purchases, which is incredibly interesting to see. I do expect them to continue buying in this quarter. And guess what? The price collapsed even more. The price literally collapsed even more. So they're going to buy back even more stock. Now, let's go back to the currency real quick. I'll look it up for you here. As we can see, revenue was down 4% over a year. But as we can see, on a constant currency basis, up 2% year over year. Now, is that 2% good? Perhaps not. But we are in an economy that is cooling off. We are in amidst Apple changes. I would say these earnings are not the earnings of a business in decline. Of course, we never know for sure because we can only look at three months here. So how much information does it really contain? That's always something that one should ask him or herself. But this is super, super important. I think this business has shown that the underlying fundamentals or the un underlying characteristics of the business are not deteriorating. And I certainly don't think the, you know, a 25% decline based on those earnings is correct. I mean, you can always read it in two ways, I guess. Uh, but I was certainly actually quite happy with those earnings and not shocked at all. So uh, that is that. Now let's take a look here. So this is a nice graph that kind of shows the EPS in the last uh, trailing 12 months. As we can see right now in decline, once again, revenue is kind of struggling. Costs go up quite a lot. Now, if we can get back to that auto EPS, is that reasonable? First of all, is that reasonable? I would argue, yes, it is reasonable. It is reasonable because I don't think the underlying business is, it might be sputtering a little bit, but it's not in, in permanent decline, in my opinion, at least. And on top of that, I do, and this is an important assumption, I do assume that Mark Zuckerberg will be able to be financially dis you know, disciplined the business again, if need be. Meaning, if the metaverse really goes out of control, he will eventually put a stop to it. Might not be immediately. He might, you know, waste a lot of money for a couple of years. But if you want to hold this business for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, it seems that you're going to be doing quite well. Don't forget, we have more users. We have more ad impressions. If we factor out the currency exchanges, we're actually growing. All right. Now, if we can go back to just the EPS that it had in 2021, well, 12-month basis, so kind of a good quarter there and, you know, kind of a linear way of measuring. But on the whole, I do think at some point this will be able to, to be pulled off by this business. If you can get back to that point, you literally look at about six times earnings, a little bit more than that. But that is what the business is trading at. Now, six to seven times these earnings and factor out the cash too. You have about 40 billion just in cash laying around. What are we looking at? I mean, really, I incredibly cheap. And normally this is a, a complete cigar, but like a very cheap company that is in decline. I would argue that this business still has quite a bit of potential, especially in the developing regions of this world. Now let's take a look at the valuation here. So Meta, I'm just going to go through quite quickly. Basically, what we assume is five years of about 7% growth. Is that realistic? 
mm, they might not be able to pull it off, f- you know, in year one or year two, but I do believe that on the whole, in the upcoming five years, it should be able to get to about 180 billion. I guess it should be fine. If not, take a couple of extra years. That's also fine. This model assumes that eventually I have to get to this point. Well, in the upcoming five years, they have to. And after that, it's a complete straight line, meaning no growth. It's just a complete flat line. Nothing happens. The business is just producing the same amount of value every single year, which is arguably extremely conservative because in five years time, Meta will still be growing most likely. It's very hard to see imagining a company, you know, in the online advertising space that will just stop growing in five years time. Probably they will keep growing. Even even it might be with one, two, three percent a year, but it still probably will be growing over time. Nonetheless, they might struggle a little bit in year one, but I think eventually they will get there. And if they do, you can expect returns of about 20% here, which is really quite lucrative. Once again, you have tons of margin of safety here, both in the assumptions, but also in the discount rate. I mean, you know, if they do a little bit worse than expected, you're still going to be looking at very, very good returns at this price. Now, when first Meta collapsed, I wasn't the biggest fan at first because Meta was still trading at a, you know, decent multiple for sure. And there were some other deals, especially in China. Obviously, uh, everyone knows that I like those deals. But right now, Meta is at a point that I really say this is this is really quite crazy. It's really irrational. It is really, really cheap. Uh, and so I would like to make use of that. I've doubled down last month on Meta platforms. Uh, and if the price stays like this, I will continue to 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 splash money on this business. Now, that was all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't come and let me know what you think about Meta. And then I'll see you in the next one.